All right, guys, welcome to One Love Podcast. Today, you're here with Jody from Intentional Healings. Let's do that again, Intentional Healings. I know I'm struggling with that. All right, guys, welcome to One Life Podcast. Here with Jody from Intentional Healings. Thank you for being here. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me, Brendan. You're very welcome. I'm excited to, to know about what you do exactly. I've got a general idea. <laughs> so let's, what is it that you, that you do? Well, I work with people who are struggling in one sense or another. You know, maybe like a lot of the clients that I work with, they are maybe just out of a divorce or going into a divorce or they've... Uh, I work with people on the physical level too, like if they've got migraines and I bring them into balance. So interesting things that are out of out in their life, I help them get back in so that they feel good. They can move through whatever aspects of their life they're going through. What is what is a balance? Balance. It's so funny you would ask that. Um, it for me, what I see is mentally and emotionally if they're not able to focus then the things in their life that they want they'll have a harder time manifesting and calling forth but when they're in balance it's much easier they're in the flow that makes perfect yeah. sense just physical um add to that as well if you're yes, physical yes, yes. out of balance definitely physical okay but i see i like i you utilize esp in a sense is the best is way to uh, extrasensory perception okay being a healing facilitator, it opened me up to be able to see things within a person that maybe regular people that are busy in their life don't see. Gotcha. So I, it's like I go inward, not to invade their privacy, but to help them see things that they aren't seeing. Inwards, uh, more like on a therapy side? Well, no, I'm saying inwards, like I have extrasensory perception, uh, like really? an empath. I feel Is that what they're going through. through experience or something that you naturally feel like you had? Uh, well, I've always been sensitive, a sensitive person. But um, once I became certified in Reiki, Universal Life Force Energy, that opened it up. Like I didn't really have to do much. I got an attunement. I got a couple of attunements. And then I started working. I started seeing things that I didn't see before then. Interesting. Yeah. You probably made more able to understand what you're seeing. Uh, well, that took time. That took a little bit of time. Mm. There were there are still times now where I ask my guidance to show me an interpretation of what I'm seeing. Sometimes I'll see or feel something and I don't know what it is or why I'm feeling it. Mm. So then I ask for guidance to show me and... It might be a delayed reaction sometimes, but I usually get what I ask for. Interesting. That's mm -hmm. okay. What we can talk about. <laughs> Just trying to figure out. Yeah. So I like I like the balancing. I think having a balance being balanced as a person, being balanced in your life is is everything. It's very hard mm -hmm. to do anything if something's off. For sure. And I've started meditating the last couple of months. Right. Um, I've started in implementing these little habits. And when I find I get off track on those, I start to feel a little bit off, a little bit unbalanced. Yeah. Is that an example of? Absolutely, and that's what I see a lot because I'm a meditation specialist as okay. well. Okay, so you definitely. So I, yeah, I teach off. meditation, I teach so, breath work. Oh really, do you? Okay, so that's yeah. something else I've incorporated. Yeah, um, I've yeah. seen you in the cold plunges. Yeah. I've done that for just seven minutes out. straight. It's so great. I just so got out great. of it a second ago. Did you? Yeah. So you must be really pumped. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm wide awake. I haven't had coffee and I'm, I'm good to go. That's but you good. have done it, have you? Do you yeah, do it very often? It. No, I only did it once. I was at a retreat in San Diego and okay. I did it. I would like to do it, but I don't really have the spot to do that's, it. That's the place. That was, yeah. That's where I was at. Do you do it right here? It's right here on my balcony. Oh, oh great. <laughs> I'm just like, I got to find a way. Yeah. Okay. So I balanced. So talk to me. Um, what is? Let's let's go over like emotion. You mentioned emotional, mm -hmm. physical, and um, what was the other one? Um, mental, emotional, Ment. but there's also spiritual. I didn't bring up the fourth. Okay. Because that's a side most people don't want to talk about their spiritual side. But I'm a spiritual educator, mm. and to me, the way I see the world is that everything starts at the spiritual. Then it comes through the mental, the emotional, and the, and then when you finally get it, let's say you get a cold. Then it gets into the physical. So it goes through all these different bodies first and then it hits the physical. So I work from the spiritual aspect. I call down the energy of the light and um, the highest good of whoever is concerned and all concerned. And with that, 
then we work through the different body. I work through the different bodies, but actually it works through me because I'm a, I feel like I'm a conduit to that, to their highest good. So what it does is it puts me in the observer position. I move back and then I allow a free flow. So it does get a little bit colored through my lens, but mostly because I've been doing this for so many years, it's like, I just watch, I step back mm. and I watch and it's so beautiful because I have no judgment. I really learned to be in a judgment free zone for, for someone's good. I don't play God. I just ask the universe to show me what, uh, what they need. And then I allow it to flow through me for them. How do you, if someone refers you or recommends you and they go to you, how do you get someone to be open to that side of things? Who's completely not? Well, that's funny that you say that because mostly I don't run into a lot of people that aren't in that place. Okay. If I have to explain uh, myself to someone new, I can, but I find myself in front of people who Wanna just have there. a curiosity okay. for it. So, so you're not trying to twist easier. anyone's arm. Yeah, or... I, I think when I was talking to my own guidance about what I wanted to do, I wanted to be able to make sense to people. And it took me years. I've been doing this since the 1990s. Mm. So it took me years to figure out what language to use and how to speak to, well, really I can speak to anybody, but the ones that are most um, open to it have already like seen something somewhere. Okay. And then they come to me with, with questions. You're, you're and then that I, next step. And, I, I'm the next step and okay. then I support them. That makes them. a lot of sense. So you're yeah. not trying to twist on Zoff who's oh, completely no. against it. No, there's too many people that yeah. are, are ready now. So somebody will hear something or they start to dive deeper and you're part of that journey. Yes, okay, exactly. that makes a lot of sense. So where, where would you say most people are unbalanced in life? Is there, is there a common thread coming up or is yeah. it all different, different variables? It's different for different people. Cause some people, you know, are more mental. So what's happening with a mental person is they're analytical and they need a lot of data mm. and they don't collect the data from their heart. So I will usually talk to a mental person and see if I'll talk to them about, let's take a 12 inch journey and go from here to here because when you can get in here, it makes the mental stimulation that you're used to, it makes it fuller and richer. Mm. And they usually get that because mental people are mostly in their heads. Now, if somebody's too emotional, then I tell them we're taking the journey up into the mental part mm. so that they can find the balance. Because if they're one or the other, they're gonna get in trouble. Uh, is it guys more up here or is it in females more here? I would say in general, what I see, because I can tell right away, you know, wh where they spend most of their time. Um, but there are mental females and there are emotional men also. Okay. So I don't is care it, where they- Is it pretty even or is it- Mostly men are more mental, but that's I do- That's kind of, that's what, I, I was like, I don't know if I feel silly saying this, but it's the first thing came to my mind. Yeah, that's an interesting I feel like question. guys are less connected from the heart of the yeah. more. In general, um, like in my classes, I get the majority are women. However, you know, in each person, there's there's a feminine side and a masculine mm, side. I just in learned everybody. about this the other day. Yeah, from a love coach, believe it or not. Oh, how <laughs> yeah. great is that? Yeah, it's true. So you know, to be in the world, if a woman is going to be like in a business, she has to allow the masculine side to mm. develop. Okay, otherwise. She's, you know, um, she can be very, very feminine in how it looks, but the masculine side is in the doing. The feminine side is in the being, so. Okay, I like that. I like yeah. That quote. So yes, most women, um, mo most women who are worker working, they have developed that masculine mm. side, um, but it's very beautiful. I think men and women get along when a woman's very feminine, then a man can relax and do what he needs to do. That's what she with, said. That's what he yeah. said, what she said. She said, <laughs> she said for a good relationship to work and people yeah. to stay together, mm -hmm. um, you need to kind of know your role. Yeah. If the man's masculine and the woman is feminine and they kind of have those roles that relate to that, they'll, right. they'll connect well. And but vice you, versa. And, vi if, and vice if versa. If the woman is more masculine, then she needs 
a little bit more feminine that's man exactly what she said to balance her. there's nothing right or wrong you mm -hmm. just got to understand that balance and where you exactly. your purpose and where you connect to one another and that was so you're saying the exact same words <laughs> all right now you've heard it twice so look yeah, for the yeah, third one because yeah. the manifestation number is three. and then it's like fact and it's <laughs> that's interesting so um i had reiki done years ago oh. and i didn't understand what, that was like literally the tapping right and the well, you can do it two different ways, either touch or hovering. They, we call it hovering when, let's say the body's here and you come three to six inches above the body. Yeah. Because we're working in the different energy fields above the body. And people will ask me, is it the same actual touch as opposed to hovering? And yeah, because everything's energy. I even do it long distance. I can send to anyone on the planet because we're all energy mm, okay so, yeah so that's a different modality the tapping it's emotional freedom technique i think is maybe what you mean where you tap you tap on different parts of the body mm. well there's different modalities that use that i don't necessarily tap but i use several different modalities when i'm doing reiki i just use whatever comes through me to okay. support and i'm pretty good at it <laughs> so i i had it done i knew nothing about it i went in like kind of just and it was amazing yeah you liked and it i can't tell you what it did or how it did it yeah. so what what is it doing and why did i feel as good as i did well i tell people that it's like an inner massage you know when you get mm. think of the outer massage and everything gets relaxed yeah so that's a perspective is that when I step back and go into ob observer mode, then I can call whatever they need. So I don't have to know what they need. They don't even have to know what they need. They just need to know maybe um, like I'm going in the direction of blank. In other words, I usually will talk to them and ask a person, what is it you want to get out of today's session? So all they have to do is set the intention. I always have them set the intention and then I connect to the higher spiritual aspect of the universe. Just to jump in there, what sure. makes someone go to Reiki? Uh, usually their brain doesn't call in what they want. Like what do they you mean? can they can try this and that and the next thing. And then if Reiki's right for them, my belief system says it'll be placed in front of them. So when you say they try this, that, like what what is this and that? Like it could be therapy. Because like I, not, <coughs> sorry. Oh, you keep going. Good. I have nothing against therapists at all. I think that they definitely have their place, like talk therapy. However, what I've noticed for me, the kind of people I draw, a lot of them have been through therapy, and what happens is because I'm going straight up, I I follow a vertical line, and this is where I get the information about a person from. In other words, I don't have to make sense of it, but when something flows through me, I just am able to have the dots get connected. So a lot of people have said to me, I've been going to therapist for seven years or eight years and nobody has like, this is the first, you, we're here for half an hour. How is it that you know this about me? Mm. And I humbly tell them, you know, I step back and say, your soul communicated with my soul and and told me what you need so how do you how are you going to get that in talk therapy you can talk for a hundred years but you're talking from your conscious mind i just go below that into the subconscious i go past the critical mind and go into the subconscious and whatever's ready whatever you're ready for it bubbles up and then I'm able to access that. And you gave me permission when you said you wanted to come and get a Reiki session. So I guess I guess what I'm asking is, um, what is somebody experiencing to go down that path? You mentioned like therapy, but is uh, it, are they suffering pain? Are they upset? Is it depression? Do they, do they go to masseuse? Yes, like, it's any of those things. I, I yeah, how, have, do they, like, how does someone like me who doesn't know anything about it suddenly want, reach out to you? Well, you'll hear something about it or you'll not feel good and you'll be talking to somebody and then they'll say, hey, have you heard of this person or have you heard of, have you ever had Reiki before? Okay. Or I know this person. Just like a little where seeds being planted. Little seeds are always being planted okay. in the universe on your behalf. I believe that the universe conspires to help us. So with that, 
even if you're not in your awareness, as long as you're open to get help, you may come to me. You may come to somebody else too. And everybody, you know, not everybody goes to Reiki. There are hundreds of alternative wellness um, mm. uh, fields that people can find. I find exactly who can benefit from. I've been doing this since the 1990s. And so can you imagine how many people find me? I've only had one person ask for a refund and that was in the very beginning because she thought she was getting a tarot reading. Okay. And I said, I'm not doing that. Gotcha. <laughs> I'm working on wellness. So if I, um, these seeds are being planted, somehow I end up in front of you. Yes. What is the conversation that you have with me? Uh, well. Before we even start. Are you, is yeah. it you analyzing why I'm there? Are you no. filling me out? Are you? No, uh, uh I don't. Okay, I'm... so what happens? So you walk in. This is in. fascinating stuff, like. Okay, so I, I've sold real estate most of my life, yeah. too. But it was never my love. This was always my love. So when we come in, I build rapport, just like you would in any other yeah. business. Once we've established that, I ask them, why are you here? And then they tell me. It's so easy for me. Do they actually tell you, or that sometimes they they'll don't know. tell me what why they think they're here? Okay, that's all I need to know. What is, type of things are you hearing? Um, I, what I would hear is, you know, I just, I just don't feel like myself, or all these things have been happening to me, and I don't understand why, and I want to feel better. So that's what I usually hear. Okay. Or um, a lot of people come to see me that are in a place in their lives where they've just had a major shift or something's going on and they just can't make sense of anything. I hear that a lot. When you say lot. shift, is that like divorce, loss of a job? It could be they want to change their change jobs, but they don't know how to get there. Okay. So I'm kind of that stepping stone. I'm not a business coach per se, um, but I can lead them into where they, where they think they want to go. And okay. with the meditation, they can either see their path or they can say, they can see that, oh, what I was thinking, I don't want to so do. So you're helping, um, you're helping them discover it themselves. Yes. Okay. Like you could say I'm more of a discovery. I'm a coach okay. too. I, I'm an NLP master coach, a okay. practitioner. So I have like all the tools to support somebody in wherever they're at. Gotcha. That's why okay. it's kind of hard to define what do you do? Well, I do whatever a person needs. Yeah, and I mean, the more, <laughs> the more tools you talk about, the more you're able to help. Yes, I had exactly. an NLP coach on this uh, chair too, and that was fascinating. Yeah. Yeah, there's so many different things that, I mean, the more you learn, the more it just kind of comes together. Exactly. Yeah. And, um, so, and, and if there is somebody I don't feel like maybe is connecting with me, I have a huge resource of other people to support them with because being being in this field and being in Las Vegas so long, I always come across like-minded people. So mm. sometimes there's a better fit and I'll help someone find what that is. Okay. And I think people appreciate that too. Absolutely. Yeah. I think when people think they're being sold or hey, this is the only way, that's, yeah. that's one thing I preach on this. There's no right or wrong way. It's exactly. what works for you. And I'm not a hard sell because, and most people that do find me, there's a reason for that, I believe. You know, there's something I can do for them. Okay. And I'm just open as they are, you know, and um, and so it's usually a very good experience. It's like having a massage on the inside. Mm. What we do say, is we just can I connect all the impulses. But it's when I say I, it's really we because I'm I'm co-creating with their soul, and then I'm going to a higher power, and then the power, the higher power does the work. And I'm just the the conduit. So to, uh, talk to me about the session itself. How long does it go for? What mm -hmm. do you do? Mm -hmm. And Tip then what, sorry. No, no. And then what type of things have come afterwards? Um, yeah, so I do a 90 minute session. Uh, that's enough time to do the healing work. And I mean, sometimes like if somebody just wants to do the healing work, I'll know because they don't talk very long. I'll ask them a question, they'll answer it. And then I can tell by their energy that they just want to get on the, okay. on the massage table. And then what I do, I, I listen to very high, high frequency spiritual music and that helps me make the connection. And then for me, it goes really fast because once I connect in with their soul, the universe does everything, but it does it through me. So if you were watching, you would see my hands moving. I kind of 
tell people it's kind of like a Harry Potter movie. You know how he takes his wand? Well, the magic is the magic of the universe. And so my hands will be moving. And sometimes I'll, uh, I'll be channeling um, like a different language that I don't think I know, but I do know it just because mm. it's passing through me. And sometimes I can help them <coughs> interpret what's being said and sometimes not. Sometimes it's just for them to hear that language. And it's not like I know 30 languages, but sometimes 20 or 30 languages come through and they're very beautiful because they come through a, a song. I have an okay voice and it just, it's you something- You sometimes sing. Yeah, it's like, um, but not consciously. I'm just connected, so it comes through me. Interesting. And I allow it. I, I guess what I'm really good at is just allowing whatever another person needs to show up, and I just trust it. Is that um, is that strange to, to for that type of thing to when happen? When it first you? started happening, <clears throat> yeah, it yeah, was I really strange because it felt like my head was going to blow up. It's like this out of body, like type, it's like someone yeah. else has come inside your body and controlling you. And well. Um, it's not like a someone, it's like energy. It mm. feels like my head gets bigger. But just to, just to be clear, uh, I always ask for, when I ask for a person's highest good, what that does is it allows it to be clean. It's of the light because I don't dabble in anything else. You know, it's like I ask for them to heal. When Whatever you say that anything is. Anything else? Them. Like you're talking. What are, other things are you talking about? Um, well, it could be construed. You know, where where there's light and darkness. There's duality. Okay. So when I connect, I mean, I call it God. Other people call it other things, like source, universe. Yeah. So I just make that deep connection. It's like on the I'm, good side. <laughs> on the yeah. If we were gonna say it, it from a duality perspective, but I I, ca I just call it the light, okay. and I think most people know there's light and dark, and dark is the absence of light. So you don't want to feel or experience anything dark or f from that person. Um. Well, it, is it okay if I just tell you? It's not that I don't want to feel it. I'm there to feel whatever there is. But what I do is I set up a protection so that if there needs to be like a cleaning of their energy, then that comes through me. And I don't mind because I'm kind of like Teflon that way. Okay. Because I've spent so much time raising my own frequency and doing my own healing. Okay. Then I'm able to be that conduit. That, okay. That's that makes what I'm sense. saying. Yeah. So, so that I'm not putting anything to, into them and they're not putting anything to me. To me. I put protection around both of us and ask for the, the light. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. And then um, afterwards, what what do people say? How are they feeling? What are their reactions? They say, when can I book the next session? <laughs> so, what, what, they like what they, what, they what feel. What is it they're liking or they're feeling? What are they feeling? What um, are they like connecting with? They're connecting with their own highest power. Whatever, um, the source is for them you know in creation because we know we can't we didn't just come into our bodies on our own volition there had to be something higher not everybody will believe in god but they for the most part even if a person person's an atheist they will still believe that they didn't will themselves into this body and there was nothing else to help them mm. so I forget your question. I <laughs> uh, no, just uh, what how people are feeling afterwards. Like after, okay, thank you for that. Afterwards, people are feeling like I just cleared out everything. They feel lighter. Like if they, you know, you know how it feels when you think you have a dark cloud hanging over mm. you. Have you ever experienced yeah. that? Yeah. So most people have experienced that in their life. But when they come here, it's like we shower them clean from the inside out. It's their inner world because the outside is just an outpicturing of the inner world. So their inner world gets clean and then they can see things outside of themselves more focused with more clarity, with more passion. That's what happens. It's like we start cleaning them from the inside out and the layers of their old programming starts to fall off. 
I mean, it's really fascinating. Mm. Uh, you know, when you see some of these breath work, um, people have done breath work and they start to break down, they're very emotional and tears. Mm -hmm. Do you get anything mm -hmm. like that as Usually, well? Usually, yeah. <laughs> okay, so that is a common thing which can come mm -hmm. with it. So what is happening there? Well, when they make that connection with their soul, whatever needs a cleanup starts to happen. And so sometimes, usually what when my hands are like around their head and their ears, I get tears in my hands, you know, really? because yeah, they, when they feel safe, when a person feels safe on the table, they'll allow themselves to just release whatever it is that's keeping when them. When they feel safe. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. From, from whatever is keeping mm. them from their. Do you feel like a lot of people don't feel safe in general? When they find me, they do. I don't understand it really. Like, I think yes, the answer would be yes. Like when I'm out in person and not in the professional side of me, I do feel like a lot of people, actually whether they're saying it or not, I get an energy vibration. And I think a lot of people, because of things that have happened, you know, from zero to seven, that's the imprint stage mm. where their programs are being created. And then they're set with those. That's why people do like inner child work, going back to the inner child to make the child feel safe. And sometimes we have to reparent ourselves okay. if someone's willing to do that work. So I would say, yeah, a lot of people just don't feel safe because they haven't learned how, you know, they're not taught how to take care of themselves. Mm. So they're depending on others, but then a lot of people just don't have the tools. Mm, okay. What is some of the most, um, I guess, rewarding things you've, you've experienced, you've done for someone? Well, I do a vision board class at the beginning of every oh, year. Yeah. yeah, I did three of them this year. One year I did six. That was a lot. But then we do a strategy with a lot of them. They'll come back for a strategy session to take what they just, I do meditations during the vision board process. So they're really pulling out what they really want because they are allowed to go deep into themselves. And then for those that come to me afterwards for a strategy session, or even without the vision board, when somebody has something that they want in their lives, but they don't know how to get it. And then somehow they find me. So I help them clarify what it is. And then I tell them, well, now it's time for you, especially if they coach with me, to put the blinders on and start walking in the direction of your dreams. And so I help them to kind of like, it's like hurting butterflies. Well, you said you wanted this, but look, you're going over here and doing that. Do you really, what, which one Does do you want to do? And yeah. so I help with accountability, but I also just help a person see, yeah, I'm going to do what it takes. And most people want that. They what just is, don't know how to do it. What is something somebody wants and they don't know how to get? Um, that's what I usually, that's usually who comes to me. Yeah. But I mean, what, what's an example of that? Like, um, let's see. Okay. So I do get a lot of people who have either been laid off from their jobs or, you know, during COVID they were there with the family, you know, the whole thing. And so they're kind of at a loss um, if they, they're becoming an empty nester or they don't like what they're doing. That's when they find someone like me because we sit down and we talk about what are their strengths? What would they like to be doing? So and they're, they're in a job they don't want to be and they want to do something else. Yeah. And they're not quite sure. What, they're not quite sure. What that is or how to get to it. Right. Okay. Those people I help so easily because okay. they're not looking at their strengths. They're looking at, they're looking at this big picture of overwhelm. And so I, I help, I take it backwards and chunk it down so that they can see. And then when, once we've gone through that process, then they realize that they do have, they do have what they need, but in the beginning they can't even see it. Okay. So I help them look at how to get there. That's okay. I've never done a vision board before. What makes a good vision board and, and how do, how's a vision board done? So uh, when people come to me, I usually have groups of maybe 15 to 20. Oh, really? Yeah, I usually like draw a crowd. Like uh, strangers or like people know each Some other? Some are strangers because I put an event on Facebook. Okay. And then sometimes um, groups will come to me and they'll bring the whole group. So it's kind of, it's really fun when that happens. 
but it's also like people are there because they're looking at, well, I'm here now and I just know I don't want to stay here because I have dreams inside of me that I don't know how to mm. bring to the outside. So before I even give them a vision board, the magazines are there, all the bling, all the decorations, everything's there. Um, I do ask them if you have intentions of what you want to create this year or in the next few years, you know, print that out and bring them. And then I talk about the I am. Are you aware? Are you no, familiar I'm with not. that? So the I am, just the words I am, anything you place after that brings the power of manifestation because I am really means God. I am that I am. So anything that you say, if a person says, I am stupid, then they're going to be bringing that energy into their mm. world, their, into their life because the words are what cast it out into their future. Yeah. I, okay. <laughs> now I know. I, I've heard Oprah talk about that, actually. Like, right? what you talk about is, is what you become. Exactly. And what you manifest and not having like self-doubting beliefs and you wouldn't talk to yourself the way that you talk to others. Right. Or you wouldn't talk to others the way you talk to yourself. Exactly. So we work on that in a vision board class, amazingly okay. enough. So um, we start speaking from where they are and where they want to go. And I kind of go around the room and ask people like, what's either what's your word for this year? Because I'm doing it around December, January. You know, what do you want to become? What do you want that you don't have now? So we start talking about it like that and then I'll do a meditation and in the meditation, it's a channeled meditation, just like most of the work I do. I, uh, I allow myself to go up and feel the energy in the room. Now I'm not feeling anybody in particular because I'm not that good <laughs> and it's a lot of energy. Yeah. So what I do is I bring in the theme of whatever information I'm getting and what it does across the board, it works for, for whoever's come to the room. And so they start, they start allowing themselves to open up. And when I, I'm just like watching the room, their eyes are closed. And then I start to pull up for them, whatever it is that they want to go. I don't know how it happens. That's the magical mm. part, Brendan. But I'm sure that there's information for them. And then when I finish with the meditation, I ask them to write down anything that they got from the meditation. Maybe they saw images, maybe they saw colors, okay. maybe they saw themselves in a, a whole different profession than what they were Getting thinking. More clarity. Or maybe they don't find themselves in the same city that they're in. They mm. see themselves in like a place that they've always wanted to go. interesting, yeah. So whatever comes, that's their subconscious telling them something. Subconsciously, so they, they think they want this. And it, then subconsciously, you brought out this. It, it happens all the time. Like I did a vision board party for a group, a small group in my home a couple years ago. And a couple were friends, they were realtor friends. And they were, both women were in their 30s and they really thought they wanted to kill it in real estate that year. Well, what they both ended up... <coughs> with, Sorry. No worries. Mm. They both wanted to have babies and it wasn't even in their conscious mind. They were in their mm. like beginning 30s. And so luckily I had some stuff with children and babies and baby carriages and they put that all over the their oh, vision really? <laughs> board but they you know they thought when they came in they wanted to make 300 400 thousand yeah well they still did well that year but one of them actually went in a completely different um direction in real estate so that's what i mean when i'm telling you you know the subconscious knows what you want and through the meditation i'm also a, a master hypnotist but i use it through meditation i just allow it to work on the behalf of the other person and then they can bring out what they what they really, really want. How often does the conscious and subconscious um, visions actually align? Or are they, or are people like, oh my God, like I'm, I'm way off track to what I think I actually wanted. Well, it's really in the situations where they, they allow themselves to meditate. And, you know, there's a stigma around meditation with people that I'm helping in the work that I do to dispel that people think I can't meditate, but I explain to them that everybody can meditate. And, and the bad thing about meditation is if you don't do it, if you don't give it a, give it an attempt to see what's under there, because I think some people think 
oh, what if I see something that, mm. that's hidden that I don't want to see? But it's not, it's really not like that. It's, um, we talk about this a lot where um, it's taking time for yourself and being mm-hmm. in your own head and being quiet exactly. and not being pulled every direction and being distracted and notifications on your phone, actually being up here mm-hmm. and being present. And most of us don't do that ever. Well, and it's, it's getting worse. It's when you, when a person does not take the time t- for self healing, mm. and you know, it's it's just self care basically. It's band aids and masking it and distractions. It's totally because people are afraid if I slow down, I'm not going to be able to make money. I think that's what's behind it. Mm. But when I share with them that you're going to make more money than ever before if you put your focus into it, because what you allow is you put the distractions over here. And then people, after they start experiencing it and they're not afraid of it, of what's underneath, then they can do all the things. They can set their intentions to Mm. meditation. Sometimes it's great just to be in this blissful state and not think about something. But then you can do, well, why do you think I named my business Intentional Healings? Because with inten- intentions, everything. Yeah. Where you place your intention is where you start going. So you can also do intentional meditations. And um, oh, just a little plug, if I could, for my business mm. is I just, I just moved into a new healing center where the, one room is for coaching and for doing the healing work, the Reiki okay. and the breath work. And the other is for meditation. So I'm also doing three times a week, I'm doing meditations and just bringing local people in Las Vegas oh, nice. into the meditation room. And then one night a week, I do it virtually so that I can oh, do, yeah. connect people With that are people. other places too. I like that. I really believe in meditation. It 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 yeah, will the, solve so many things. The more you do it, the more you realize how, you, how much you should do it and how, mm-hmm. how rewarding and amazing it can be. Well, they say if you don't have time for 20 minutes of meditation, you should meditate for an hour. <laughs> I like that. I had a lady, um, she journals, and she's like, if you haven't got 10 minutes to journal in the morning, you don't have any time. Exactly. And, and that resonated with me. And ever since then, I've been journaling every single day. And don't you find that you get things that you never would have gotten otherwise? It's just it's the clarity and the appreciation and the gratitude exactly. and writing your goals down every day. And it's just the accountability to yourself, I think, keeping promises to yourself and mm. just and just being aware of what you did and didn't do and what you could do better. And it's, it's interesting. I want to ask you a question, though. Uh, you talk about the vision board. Um, so Adam, Adam's pressing me on what do you want? And when I tell him, he's like, why? And he's pressing me very hard on that. Mm-hmm. Do you press these people on the why behind the vision? I don't press them because I'm, I guess, I think when I'm doing vision boards, I'm softer. Okay. He, <laughs> so yeah, he's Adam hard is, yeah, Adam will. Um, okay. So, so yes, though, there is a certain pressing that says, if you don't know why, if you don't know what your big why is, let's mm. say you don't have to know this all the steps, but you have to know why you want to do it. But I focus on, uh, oh, okay, I do focus on the why more than the how. Like people usually don't know how they're going to get there, but the why, why you want it, like let's just say somebody's like saying, I want to make a hundred thousand this year. Yeah. If you don't know what you want to spend the money on, you will you won't have the passion to go and get it mm. or to have it come to you. Yeah. So in a sense, but I do it in a gen- more of a gentle way and through meditation it'll come out because remember they're going down into the subconscious which passes the critical mind. The critical mind is all about why you're not good and all that, but it goes down below that and it pulls up what they really want. And then once they see what they really want, then we talk about, so what do you want? You know, why do you want that? What are you going to do with that? And, and maybe they've never had anybody ask them those questions. No, I don't think anyone has. It's kind of, it's, it's heavy. Yeah. It's, it's such a simple question, but it's like, and then it starts to, then you start to think everything you do or say, or say yes to, or no to, does that align with your why and your goals and your vision? Mm-hmm. Well, and you know, maybe in the beginning it's it's a lot. And once you start going that in that direction, the flow will happen easier. It's just kind of, it sounds like it's just getting used to something new mm. that you're not, 
used to dealing with. But once you get there, then you won't even have the distractions anymore because it's so pure when you know mm. when you know what's what your outcome is and you're sort of working backwards because like you already see the outcome. Yeah. Once you can see it, then you can start walking towards it. That's what I do. Mm. That's in a nutshell how I help people. Okay. So let's talk meditation. Uh, where do you get started? How do you do it? And then we can progress from there. Mm -hmm. Well, usually people come to meditation. Uh, my belief is that something is like not right. Mm. Okay. So they're saying, hmm, I think I need to quiet this in my mind because mm. we have 70, th we have 70,000 thoughts a day. Like that's 70, a lot. 70,000. Well, approximately plus all the advertisements, distractions. I mean, a lot of that. it's not even our own thoughts, but they're coming through as thoughts. And so much comes through that we're, it's not in our awareness. It's like a different frequency. Okay. So that's why meditation will quiet the mind because our minds are so busy. And we're not meant to be in our mind. We're meant to be in our bodies and in our heart. That's interesting. The but, mind is full of the distractions, but we need the mind to, um, once we know what we want to do, to start the to-do list and doing those things. It's a combination of both. So you're talking about quieting your mind so you can get to your Get body. into your heart. That's interesting. I, I could see that. I the could... heart actually emanates, they call it a heart brain. The heart brain emanates more than frequency wise more than the head does we have three that? brains we have the enteric brain too which is like the lizard brain when something hits you in the gut and you know i i gotta go a different direction okay, right. so the heart the heart brain really is is the key to what is the heart brain well they i've just heard like Dr. joe dispenza talks about mm. the three different brains the heart brain picks up all the frequencies in the in the energy field and from that aspect it takes you into oneness so that's the difference the mind itself can't get you into oneness but it's really the three parts of the body there are seven chakras they need to be clean um, i just purchased a device where you can you, you stick your thumb in there and it scans the body and it shows you in your aura, you've heard of the aura mm. around you, it shows you where your life force is low. It also shows where the chakras, which are the spinning wheels of life, that when they're like distorted or um, you have blockages in your chakras, then things don't work properly. So I work with all of that. I work in the energy field, the auric field, and also, I open the chakras like sometimes this is where the intuition is in the third eye. They call it the brow chakra. The brow. And when it's closed, you can't really see what you need to do or where you need to go because your energy is like deadened for a moment. Okay. But it's very easy with the connection to be able to open that up. So I don't know if that answered your question. No. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> going this, in tangents it, everywhere. <laughs> it kind of the more people I talk to, the more there's like crazy depth on everything, uh -huh. and somebody will live and breathe everything you do, and someone does the complete other side, uh -huh. and it, it's it's amazing. Like it's so many totally on so many different things out there. So this is it's, kind of a cool thing if if you would like learn something about me that in the nineties. The reason I found this, I believe, is because I was I needed to um, divorce my my former husband. Okay. It broke my heart to break up my family with my daughter. So Reiki showed up, and I started realizing I had what's called the dark night of the soul, where I realized I had to make a shift, and <clears throat> I didn't know myself how to get out of it. Okay. So that's when I met my Reiki master teacher. That's when I started seeing that there's so many deeper layers than to what we can just see with our own physical layers eyes. Layers is a good word, yeah. What is the word? Layers, layers is a good word. Yes. Yeah. See, so you, what you're doing for other people, you went through this yourself. Oh, yeah. And that's what inspired you to help other people. Yeah, I believe I can only do for others what I have a concept of myself. Mm. 
<clears throat> and so it, I, it's not that it was easy, but it became easier the more I went internal and realized that life is supposed to be lived from the inside out rather than taking in everybody's stuff without having a foundation of strength. Mm, okay. So the strength, once it was developed on the inside, then I could really help others. That's interesting. Until that point, I was just, you know, la la la, living my life, um, but needing to make changes. And maybe that's why what I do the most is help people who need to make a change in their lives and they feel it, but they just don't really know how to support um, that. Your real estate, was it for money or were you passionate about it? Um, well, I started doing it in the eighties, but I would say how I came to it was not passionate because I was a special education teacher in the eighties. Okay. And I love that. But when I started my new life in my twenties with my, my husband, everything took a different direction and I didn't feel I was really in control of it. What I liked about real estate was that I got to connect with people and I got to give them keys, you know, to a big thing. And then I got to take a check. All the in-between stuff, like I did naturally because I'm a people person. However, I knew it wasn't my passion, but I've yeah. been in it 40 years. I just finally gave up my real estate license oh, really? two months ago. What's the difference between um, something like this where you're so passionate about and then doing something where you're not so passionate about? Well, that was, um, there was, I think there was just a time for that because that's just where I found myself, but it wasn't really with consciousness, you know? Mm. As soon as the consciousness came in that I'm not, not living up to my highest standard, then I realized and I asked the universe, show me something better. And that's when my life started changing. Do you feel more uh, rewarded? And do you feel be a lot better just being true mm -hmm. to yourself now? A hundred percent. For people, I still have friends in town that knew me back then. And they cannot even believe the changes. Oh, uh, so they're saying the best part. They're saying the best side of you now. Oh, yeah. And you probably weren't unhappy or anything. You probably just... No, I was unhappy. Oh, you were? <laughs> well, I was happy. But you're still doing this at the same time, weren't you? Yes, but not to the degree. Okay. So I you... did a little bit. I did real estate was what my income, you know, earning results were. Mm. And what I found, uh, the more I did this for friends, the more I did the, the Reiki and energy healing. And they had com I had to develop the confidence in myself. Because back in the day, it was like... This you, is wacky, you know, you you're had a, wacky. So you had a, <laughs> and you had a safety net and yeah. you needed to cut those ties. So they ties could see me as that. the professional in real estate, but then yeah. I did. I had to cross over and... So, uh, okay, so what, <laughs> someone who's doing both, they got a passion, but they're, they're half-assing it because they got a safety net. What yeah. do you tell that person? I tell them, you know, to really strategize what they want to do. Like sometimes you can't just jump over no, into no, the I next agree. thing because you you may leave yourself without. Um, you, you, yeah, but you can also stay stagnant in that kind of. Oh yeah, in no, between I, for, for I tell years people, too. don't tell me what you want to do if you don't want me to be that gentle wind behind your. your, uh, your wings. I like how you're gentle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm a little bit more on the harsh side yeah well that's why you have adam in your life <laughs> yeah yeah maybe so right but um yeah i feel like um i feel like a lot of people like they're very passionate about something but they're either scared they're worried about someone else's opinions they're worried about oh, their yeah. parents opinion they could be a lawyer they could have an amazing amazing job but it's, they're not being true to themselves. Yeah. Well, that just doesn't work in the real world is when they are. And it's it's a looking good program. So I even work with, work with that because looking good comes from, you know, wanting to put your best foot forward, but depending on somebody else's opinion. So I help mm. them like go within and ask, I ask them, so why is that important to you? Mm. And then we just start going down in the layers to find out because it's never what they tell me right up here. It's a few layers down. What, what type of stuff are you hearing? Because I'm all about this, like other people's opinion and stuff. This is something I really want to get across to people. So usually a looking good program is because that's how a person is used to getting the affection they need, the love that they need. But what's really under it is they think that they don't deserve to be loved for just who they are. So uh, are you talking about what... Uh, 
the car they're driving, the house. Like it could be all of that. It could just be like, like if, let's say you saw a beautiful woman, and you think she's beautiful. She's got a few extra pounds on herself. She may think she's the worst person in the world because of the standards of society is to be built like a Barbie doll. But she, you know, it's when a person has a distorted opinion of themselves because they just what's really okay. So here's the under. What's under it is they are either un. They feel like they're unseen. They haven't been heard. Or it's just they don't deserve to have the love that they want. It's always about love,、mm. because once they feel that they can love themselves, they can have everything that they want in their life.、Mm. But it's because somebody told them something when they were little in that imprint stage, and they believed it, and it really wasn't true. I can re- I can relate to that. The more you love yourself, the more hap- happy you are with yourself. The happier everything becomes. Yeah, then you're in the you get into the flow with that. Yeah, and then you learn to not worry about people's opinions or not、right. worry about what I'm driving or what I'm wearing or where I'm what I'm doing.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, because we come into this world with nothing, we leave this world with nothing.、Mm. The rest is playtime. We get to play, but if you're not good here. You know, if you're not good with yourself, none of that really matters.、Mm, you、nice. can drive a junk car and be happy, or do you have to have a Lamborghini? <laughs> yeah, and then that can go to not being able to afford it, being stressed. Yeah. Like,、um, rich people have problems too. They're just, you know, they just require a lot more tending to. Yeah, yeah. So I think really it's all within here, and that's the work that I do. It's just, it's really amazing because then you start to. I, I always give tools with my sessions, tools and techniques, like with、um, anxiety. I, I do get people with anxiety and depression. So the first thing I teach them is how to breathe properly in an anxious. Keep <laughs> I, keep, I, I keep hearing this stuff, so I'd love to keep going. Yeah. So. <coughs> so,、um, what is the recommended breathing?、Uh, I always say, well, three is a manifestation number, so. Take a deep breath in through your nose, and then out. When you exhale, take it all the way out. If you have anxiety, what's happening is the third eye, the brain, the pineal gland, it freezes, and you're not getting enough oxygen to the brain. So you have to take that inhale deeply. And that's you can it- hold it, and then you breathe out. You're breathing with intent too, right? It's the well. In an anxious situation, you may not have intent. It's well. It's survival, basically.、Mm, okay? okay. Because until you can <clears throat> can unfreeze that, you're in fight or flight and freeze. So, think about it. When you breathe three times like that, then what happens? It warms it up, and and the oxygen starts flowing. The blood starts flowing. So let's just say some people wake up in the middle of the night with anxiety. I don't know if you've ever experienced no. that. No, that's good that you haven't. But I know people that two, three, or four in the morning, something will grab them in the night. If they do those three deep breaths, even if you know, like that's why I say you know, intention may not be important, but the intention is just to breathe, just to go through this deep breathing where it it loosens everything up. Now sometimes. That's not enough. So then I tell people to slowly count from one to ten. That's where intention can come at this next stage, because then they've they've got a little bit of oxygen flow. They can get a little. They go out of their bodies because they're trying to survive. Is what happens.、Mm. So then they're called back into their body, and then they have that process of one to ten. If they're still not there, then they can slowly count back to one. Most people by that point. Are there unless it's a trauma situation, and then they just go out of their bodies to survive.、It's, what's coming to my mind is when you jump in the cold. Yes, it, it's exactly the same. And that's Every, that's what they tell you is to breathe in those every, cold every, plunges. Everything you're talking about is so is is breathing. You jump in the、yeah. cold, and you can hold it and get anxious, or you can embrace it, sink into it,、mm-hmm. and start breathing. And doesn't it warm、and、up I, in your body? I can you literally、that? relax、yeah. in the first second or two now if I breathe. Right. If I don't breathe, 
I know. Then it, it doesn't get any you better, and, and you just no, it gets you worse. get stuck. It, it, yeah, ex, it escalates. So um, I like to do box breathing. I give, mm-hmm. I'm sure you yep. do a lot of that. I, I teach that. Um, box breathing for me, four in, hold for four, four out, hold for four, and I just mm-hmm. it, come it does. Into it's it. just very chill. <laughs> yeah, and I've learned that you can do that all the time now, mm-hmm. and even just um, you might be able to back this up, but most of us aren't. You ever read the book Breath? I, oh, is that the little book? Uh, no, it's pretty. It's it's good. It's a normal sized book. Okay, I'll get you to read it. I got the simple version. <laughs> oh, but um, it's an amazing book. But it talks about most people are mouth breathers. We're not breathing correctly. Mm-hmm. Can you back that up? Well, most of us shallow breathe, and so through our mouths too, correct? Um. You know, I never paid attention where we breathe from, but I know that we breathe shallow because we're not con- we're not connected. Yeah, you're right. The nose is the deep breath. I'm I'm basically intuitively taught, and then I I followed some breathwork teachers to three different countries, and so just started practicing the breath plus meditation, all plus that. Plus the meditation. Yeah. So I didn't go really deep into the mental part because I'm more emotional. Like I'm okay. worried. I need to feel this in my body. But we, because we go on the breath is automatic. We 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 do the shallow breathing mm. and then our mind when our minds are distracted that's the worst thing so that's why we have to develop a practice of it yeah like doing when you it say, throughout the day like you say when you're anxious or you're stressed or you're distracted then you you definitely not breathing properly yeah and then yeah it's it's amazing once you become aware of it once you start doing it once you start doing it properly mm-hmm. i'm always breathing properly now i'm always feeling but i'm getting my butt kicked boxing or something and i'm breathing in i'm in the car now and i'm breathing in it's when i'm sleeping my mouth is stuck shut it's Mm -hmm. it's amazing Mm -hmm. and it's just i so when when i'm in the sauna i go to the sauna a couple times a week and there's people in there (sighs) it creeps me out (laughs) so bad (laughs) they don't know how to breathe it 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 makes me cringe and maybe some, you could teach them in, yeah, in the sauna. <laughs> maybe I need to. And it's some <laughs> overweight guy who's the same age as me. And he's, I was like, how does this person even get through the day? Well, we're not taught some of the most important, just, just you know, the things that we need. Mm. We're not taught from childhood. Just think what it would be like this this world if if kids were taught to meditate from early on, if we were taught to breathe properly, mm. it'd be a whole different world that we lived in. Yeah, they're talking about uh, the, the facial structure can actually change by breathing different mm-hmm. ways. Um, you can actually lose your looks by not breathing correctly. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah it's, it's, I think it does make us older when we're not when we're breathing. Yeah, shallow. it makes. Um, they talk about like sleep apnea and snoring is mm-hmm. not breathing properly that's mm-hmm. all the saying it is nothing mm-hmm. but not breathing properly and it's the only thing that we have that's so automatic you know like that you say, when, we don't think about when we start yeah. realizing that this is happening all the time and then we put some focus to it it can change your life mm. yeah. um before we finish up do you mind sharing how old you are i'm 63 <laughs> Why and how are you in such good shape at 63? What's what's your secret? You look great, by the way. What I thank you. That's the only reason I ask because you look amazing and you, well, you're going uh, 90s, 80s. I'm like, you got a lot of history there. <laughs> so what are you doing yeah, to I've stay? I've been around a while. It's the it's the work that I do. What work are you doing? Are you doing exercise and stuff as well, or are uh, you doing? Well, actually, what I'm talking about is the work that I'm passionate about. I believe the Reiki has made me. Um, you know, kind of age backwards. I mean, I have wrinkle, I've earned my wrinkles. However, I'm able to th- think like people in their forties about like the way I'm enthusiastic about things mm. because I've done my own work. I've, that's what I'm talking about is I really work from the inside out and have learned to uh, make sure that my life is about my passion. It's my soul's blueprint. And I work on that every day. And I've worked on it for 35, 40 mm. years. So that's why I think um, I just pay attention to the important things for me. And so what that means is my attention is not everywhere else. I contain it. 
and then I, I draw to me everything that I need. So it's not like I'm an island, but I am self-sufficient because I'm doing what I'm what I know I'm supposed to be doing. And whenever I get off kilter, I feel it, and then I call mm. in what I need to be in alignment with myself. And it seems like you've got, a, especially with what you do, you've got a lot of good habits, a lot of good things you do on a consistent basis. Does having those habits, has that, um, is that incorporated like eating, fasting, things like that as well? Yeah, I do some of that, but I also, just like you talked about in the beginning of the interview, sometimes I lose um, my perspective and my hardest things are staying fit from the food perspective, eating the right way all the time. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, but I exercise quite a bit, so. Okay, what type I, of exercise do you do? Uh, I do Pilates okay. four or five times a week, and I, I'm at the gym twice a week, and then I have a little dog who I walk him four times a okay. day. So I'm doing a lot of movement. So you've got a lot of good habits. I do. And, and, that's, then, and for me personally, habits is where is why I am where I'm at. Exactly. Full stop. You have to have... You have to have good habits, definitely. You have to you have to put them in place and then stay trained with them. It's the mm. it's really is the discipline. Yeah, that's uh people have said like the habits is what creates the discipline. Mm -hmm. The habits will get you through the days that you don't want to do it. The habits will get you through the days you do want to do it. Mm -hmm. And, and that's then what... focusing on your why too. Mm. The why is not a bad thing. The why is a good thing. It's the why is like, a really good thing. Yeah, it's like okay, I see it, I see it coming, and then I go even deeper. I, um, I'm a proponent of, of Dr. Wayne Dyer, and he said, you can bring your future to you. You don't have to wait for your future to happen. And in my meditations, and you'll have to come to one of them. Yeah, I'd love to. You bring your future to you. You ask your future self, what is it that I'm ready for? And then it's like, okay, we're going to do this together. And then you bring it into your, your, um, your present right now and don't live in the past. Mm. The past is an anchor to keep you from your joy. Mm. I 100% agree. <laughs> that was a pleasure. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you so much, Brendan.